Let's talk about maths. Let's talk about maths, baby. Let's talk about, no, that's exactly, I'm gonna leave that on there just to embarrass myself. But let's talk about maths. I wanna calibrate this tank gauge. Now this tank gauge is capable of doing its own internal maths. You tell it how long, high and wide the tank is and it tells you the value of the tank. Then when you drop in a press transducer, it looks at that pressure based on the values you put into it and gives you a liter reading. But at the minute it says 4,000 liters. But we got told there's four and a half thousand liters in this tank. So what other options have I got that are physical? I've got the gauge, I've got a tank, and I've got one more thing which I'll go and show you now. In here, there is a dipstick. Yeah, like every car. That says, you can just see the oil going off. Bang on 4,000. It is literally bang on 4,000, yeah? So I know there's 4,000 liters in this tank according to this dipstick now, but hang on a minute. This gauge was really wrong this morning. Then when I ran the manufacturer, they told me that the specific gravity for the oil is 0 0.89. Now I've set that, this says 4,000. So now we've got some comparable values. Calibration is an absolute nightmare because you are trying to set a value, a process value that's, that needs to be reliable. This tank gauge says 4,000 litres. The user will assume it's 4,000 litres in this tank, yeah? Which is fine. But 4,000 litres against what? What do you compare it to? Compare it to... 4,000 litres, that's the calibration. But 4,000 litres of what? Apparently, I've been delivered 4,500 litres of oil. That's what I think we've paid for. So you'd think that would be reliable, but something somewhere is wrong. So this is saying 4,000. The dipstick's saying 4,000. The only thing that can save us here, for me not looking a dickhead, accusing us of being shortchanged, is maths. I've come in here because it's freezing, yeah? What I'm saying is, I've got different values. The dipstick which is from a tank manufacturer, says 4,000. So you think that would probably be right. They've made a few more tanks than just that one. Then, to spat that up, my tank gauge says 4,000. So you think that would probably be right as well. I can't just ring them up and accuse them of short changes by 1,000 litres, 500 litres, whatever it is. I need to do the maths, yeah? I need to know the thing. The options you've got are weighing it. Well, I'm not going to drag all the oil out there to weigh it, yeah? So I can't do that. So I've done some maths down here. I've took the known height, width, and length of the tank, worked that out into the cubic metres, found out the manufacture of the oil, done the maths, which I'm not going to go into since it's boring. I can hear Sam saying boring now. And I've worked out the height that 4,000 litres should be. And I've dipped it with a tape measure, and it's right. So now I think we've been shortchanged. So yeah, when you are calibrating something because they're going to use that value, that process value, you need to be right. If they think there's 500 litres extra oil in there, and they don't reorder any because there's 500 in there, there's absolutely nothing, they're going to come to me and they're going to have a right mod. So calibrations are a nightmare. Back in the day on a weigher, when I worked in cement, we'd have weighed a tonne weight on a scale we thought was right, then we'd have took it to the scale we were setting up and made that weigh a tonne. It's not too bad with weights because you can move weights around. You can move bags of cement around and ton bags of sand around stuff like that so it's not a problem but with liquid i'm not pumping it out and i've got nowhere measuring the liquid except for the mass so as long as you can measure the width the height or the cylindrical value and this you don't need to do the mass anymore there's online calculates for it you can work out what's in the tank and i at the minute think we've been short changed for 6,500 uh, for 500 liters but yeah the other one that mass won't let you down on is if that if that measured the depth from the top of the tank to the value, let me draw your picture. All the flash sensors and measuring devices in the world are just doing maths. In this example, I've got a round silo because I used to work in cement and all our silos were round, yeah? So it's basically a cylinder. The cylinder is here. This bottom bit, the cone, we ignore that. We just class that as buffer level, yeah? Because it's hard to measure because it's not got consistency in its size. But this cylinder, that circle gives it a volume and the height of the product will tell you how much it is. So if this bit's here, and it's half full, that is 50. If it's up here and it's full, that's 100. And if it's down here, it's zero. But if you know the specific gravity of the liquid or the density of the product, using the cylindrical value and the height from the bottom, which just gives you a smaller cylinder, you can work out pretty much exactly what is in there and use that to calibrate whatever you put in the top to do the measuring. You can always trust the mass if you check them. But yeah, for anything you want to coarse weigh, like sand, cement, uh, sugar, flour, or something like that, this is a wicked way of doing it. 
if you wanted to make pharmaceutical products, you'd put a weigher on here. You'd put load cells on and weigh it because that's more accurate. Then when it came out, you'd put it into a smaller weigher and check weigh it. But for low accuracy pro problems, this maths will always give you probably around 5% of your volume. So yeah, if you are in doubt when you're doing a calibration and you don't trust what you've been given or you don't trust the sensor, you can always take the values, whether it's percentage, the milliamps or the depth to this, and you can do the measuring yourself with your tape measure, I don't know if you remember those, and you can work out what you should have and whether that compares to your process value. So when it gets to it, down here, you'll know you've run out of coke, which is a form of coal. So the maths will always help you out, but if you do want to calibrate something super accurately, it's best to do it with a calibration method, like a volume. So there are companies out there that will supply you an exact volume of liquid or an exact volume of product. Problem is, if you pump an exact volume of liquid out of a tank that's been supplied to you in, you'll leave some liquid in the tank so your volume will change. Calibration weights cost an absolute fortune and have to be handled like they're made out of glass. But yeah, calibrating a value, you take it for granted, but it's not always easy. Because, for example, is it for the same volume, wet sand is lighter than dry sand? Work that one out. I used to work in powders, that was my business. Ah, oh, yeah. But yeah. By the same volume of sand, if it's wet, it weighs less than dry because the water takes up space, but the sand is heavier. Yeah, that's how it works. Bonkers.